Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars, legends, and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Gwen Taylor is one of Britain's greatest actresses ever. She's delicious, currently sat on a sofa, and she joins us on FaceTime now. How are you? I am absolutely wonderful. I've had a great day. We've been doing a publicity promo for Beauty and the Beast in Derby. And so I've done photographs, I've done interviews, I've got a a strange costume on my face looks quite tarty my <laughs> hair is rather beautiful and i've got a tiara on so what could be better and what a waste that i'm sat here 200 miles away and can't see you it certainly is isn't it depressing why didn't they let me know i should have got a train or something hey listen oh, come on you old soft soap for you do you know what it's great to talk to you you were really part of my child as as you were for many watching you on these amazing programs doing these killer shows and you're back home for christmas doing panto which sort of brings you full circle where you started it is indeed yes indeed i started in amateur theater in derby to begin with then went to drama school then came back and appeared in panto at the derby playhouse when it was in sa chevrolet street playing a jumping bean very nice and here you are in beauty and the beast which one are you playing beauty or the beast i'm playing the beast no i'm playing the enchantress <laughs> It's brilliant, don't isn't it? Ask me, don't ask me what she does because I haven't got a script yet. I just want to be in it. It'll be wonderful. Do you know what's amazing? Every year I see probably four or five with mates of mine in the business up and down the country. I was lucky enough to see the Palladium last year and I see the local ones. And no matter where you go, the entire cast always give 100% because there's no option, is there? You either give it all or nothing. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do it. I, I love that commitment to the job. And... Um, I, I really want to, to, to entertain children to the best of my ability. There are so many things, rather than theatre, that they can see nowadays. And I want the theatre experience to be magical, as it was for me when I was a child. It's never been more vibrant, it seems to me, with things like Wicked on the Road. Of course, Beauty and the Beast has just come out on film from the Disney animated yeah. classic, which is great timing for you. I mean, that's perfect, isn't it? It is, actually. And Cinderella, I saw as well, Kip Branagh's Cinderella, which was rather wonderful, too. Yes, I saw Beauty and the Beast a couple of weeks ago. I'm nothing like their Enchantress. <laughs> but there we go. And the Enchantress is the Enchantress, and I'm it. I've got to ask you a really personal question, Gwen, and you might get offended and slam the phone down, but will you be flying in? Because there's, those hoists can really hurt, you know, that they're not very comfortable. Thank you for that comforting thought. I don't know. I think I'll be flying out. Oh. I think I'll be doing a Mary Poppins. Oh, uh, it does hurt more when you fly up than fly down, I've got to tell you. On Friday, I'm going to a flying firm to see whether it's possible to fly an old woman <laughs> into the air. And, and, and they'll tell me whether they think it's a good idea for me or not. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm in their hands at the moment. But I'd love to do it. I'll never be asked to do it again, will I? So I think you will. I? I, I think you will. Is it great being you at this point? When you look back at your CV, which if we started reading now, we'd still be there at Christmas. You've had some amazing gigs. You've done them well. You've had no controversy and you're still at it. That's the dream, isn't it? I don't know. Does that make me sound a bit boring, do you? <laughs> no controversy. <laughs> I should probably go out and have an affair with somebody. Yes. Friends. How about Wayne I'm Rooney, lucky. something like that? I'm very lucky. I've got a great marriage. I've got a lot of family around, and I've had a great upbringing here. And um, I, I'm just, I, I've just, work has just come to me. Not, I mean, not enormously highly paid stuff, but good stuff that I've enjoyed has come one after the other, and I've had very little time out of work. So I'm an extremely lucky bunny, I must say. Yeah, it's wonderful. When we look back at your career, was there a year when you felt you've made it, or are you a jobbing actress that every time you finish a gig think, right, I've got to start again? Yes, I'm afraid that's me. I'm, I'm, I think it must be my Derby upbringing. I don't come. I don't. I don't. I don't sit on my laurels at all. I think, okay, dust off, start again. And wow. see, I've never really thought that I, I, I'd made it in anything. Um, and if I did think that at all, it was always the wrong thing I was thinking about. Mm. It, you know, it, it didn't make me. So uh, I think I, I think I'm more of a jobbing actress who takes the next job as it comes along, if it if it suits, and gets on with it. You know, and, and because of that, I I don't think you can say that I've failed at anything. I don't feel I have. I feel I've given 
all I can, all my energies and my commitment to jobs, and hopefully people will remember them. I put you up there with the sort of Anne Reeds, those consistent actresses that turn up and do the jobs. I mean, it's a great place to be, isn't it, when you're in that category? Oh, I so admire Anne Reed. How lovely. I would love to be considered in the same category. You are, Gwen. Do you not see yourself? Well, Have you got a mirror? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, she's done some very exciting things, and um, and, and um, I think she's terrific. I saw her um, her one-woman show at ZL in London. She did a cabaret show, which was fabulous, and I thought, God, she's so bright. She, yeah. Not only is she an actress of some note, but she's doing her own cabaret show. Ooh. I know. And the singing as well, fabulous at that. Yeah, she was wonderful. She was absolutely wonderful. The 80s was a good period for you. I mean, we got to know you on Duty Free, which I think is yeah. what most people immediately uh, relate to your name. But, I mean, you did sitcom after sitcom, and it was amazing. I mean, even from Coronation Street to winning BAFTAs, you've really done it all, some incredible roles. I have. I've been, as I said to you before, I've been so lucky. People have seen something in me that, that, that they think will help a show or be part of a show. And so I really have I really have been touched with a little bit of a fairy dust on my career, you know. Mm, which is perfect for an enchantress. Are you looking forward to things like the 12 days of Christmas, which they normally do, that takes every ounce of energy you've got? Because it's a slog, isn't it, doing two shows a day for weeks on end? I'm kind of a little bit apprehensive about my energy level and whether I'm going to be able to sustain it. I'm going to have to be very kind to myself and not um, tie myself out in other things. It's got to be number one. The pantomime has got to be number one in my life, you know, in terms of my energies and things. Yeah. I can't I can't be out late at night and I can't, you know, I've, I've got to look after myself. So so um, I think it'll be all right. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got quite a lot of energy. I wouldn't say I'm the fittest woman in the world, but I have been going to the gym twice a week for a while now to try and get myself, you know, up to standard. And I do like to walk, so... I think I'm I think I'm going to be okay. You're not there with those muscle Marys doing the weights, the heavy weights. You're not going to look like sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger by Christmas. I, I'll stand and watch them by, <laughs> by all means. They're very nice too. No, I do things I do things like cycling and a bit of rowing and, and treadmill and things like that. The easy things, but at least it gives me you know, it gets my heart pumping and gives me a bit of you know, just a bit of exercise, which is mm. nice. It's an incredible thing to do. You imply you've not done panto before. I find that hard to believe. Uh, I did. I, I did. I should know the jumping bean. That yeah. was the last time I did it in Derby. Um, I, I've done a couple of things that are Christmas shows, but like I did, I played Alice in Wonderland once in, in at the Crucible Sheffield. Mm. I've done a couple of things that were Christmas shows, but they weren't strictly speaking pantomimes. No, mm. so and, it's, it's a different genre. And of all the stuff you've done, is it the most thrilling to be in front of a live audience or in front of a camera? Oh, that's a difficult one. On the whole, it's most thrilling to be in front of an audience. Mm. But it all depends on the part. Right. I mean, you know, if it's not a very wonderful part, then it, then it's much better to be on television because you only have a short shooting period for a small part. If it's a small part on stage, then there's an awful lot of sitting around and I find that really so destroying, you know, because you have to be in the theatre to take the curtain call at the end. Of course. But, um, so, it, I, I think theatre will always be, it, it's where I started and it will always be my first love and always be where, where I feel grounded. You know, I'm, I'm not terribly good with it, with the technical media. I let someone else get on with that, cameramen and sound men and mm. let them get on with it. So, no, I think the theatre has to be where I think I belong. And one of the roles I'd love to talk to you about, which is, again, iconic, as many of your roles have been, was in Monty Python's Life of Brian. What an extraordinary gig to get, and especially looking back at that list of legends now that you work with. I know, can you believe it? I mean, I did um, um, Michael Palin's Ripping Yarns, which was wonderful, <laughs> and I did Monty Python's Life of Brian. And I, I mean, I'm so lucky to have done them. Um, whenever you know, whenever I'm, 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 I join a young company and they don't quite know what we oldies do, it only needs somebody to say, "Oh, you were in Life of Brian, weren't you?" And, and then they're all interested in, in that, you know, what I've done. So it's a good thing to do early on, you know, in your career because people do remember it and, and want to talk to you about it. Was it fun? I mean, working with Cleese and 
Eric? It, it wasn't, no, it wasn't fun. No, because they, they were so, they were such hard workers. They worked so hard. We were in Tunisia and it, it, it was hard work, but I wouldn't have missed it for anything. Um, it, I can't actually say it was fun. Right. right. Running down a hillside in a, a long white robe carrying a gourd with my a wig on my head was not fun. I have to be honest with you. I thought I was going to die, but um, and the heat was quite something. But oh my God, I'm so glad I did it. It's mm. it's paid off really, and and also being strapped to a cross, singing always look on the bright side of life was not my idea of of a, a gentle way to end the day. But nevertheless. I do it. But amazing. I mean, become iconic, hasn't it? It has indeed. Yes, it has. Very much so. I can't wait to see you uh, this Christmas. It's been so lovely talking to you. I don't know whether we've been avoiding each other for all these years, Gwen, but we, we seem to have missed each other. So thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. It's, it's an absolute pleasure, Alex, and it's lovely to talk to you at last. I'll come and see you in Derby Live at the uh, wonderful pantomime Beauty and the Beast, which is going to be yes, extraordinary. It's at the arena. It's at the arena in Derby, so that's rather exciting because I've never played there before. So that's rather interesting. A lovely venue, and they're putting on a huge show as well, which is fantastic. When you see that curtain yes. go up and the sparkle and the campness, it is really what Christmas is all about. It is, isn't it? It is. Just well, I hope you enjoy it when you come. It'd be lovely to meet you. Can't wait to see you. Gwen Taylor, thank you so much for your time. See you at the Derby Arena in Beauty and the Beast this Christmas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. A lovely interview. Thank you.